Well, thanks, Andy and Jennifer. These days, alone time in general can often seem like a fleeting dream, something many of us desire but never actually achieve. But in our daily walk with God, it is crucial. In his latest teaching, Bill Harris discusses the importance of this alone time with God and how even Jesus relied on it for strength. Bill also discusses the power of rejection and how the fear of it can be a stranglehold on our hearts, preventing us from forming the deep, personal relationships that we need. As Christians, we can take heart in knowing that Jesus endured and overcame the ultimate rejection and will meet us even in our darkest moments. Bill, I'm going to read something back to you that's directly out of one of the teachings you gave recently. Uh -huh. And I want you just to unpack it a little bit because you say, <laughs> have you ever seen Christians who try to make up for the fact that they don't spend time praying by doing other things for the Lord, such as singing in the choir, serving on the deacon board or trustee board or some other capacity? This yeah. is in relation to your, your teaching on spending alone time with God. Yeah. Are those bad things or are we, are we not supposed <laughs> no. to be spending time on, in the choir or what are you saying? Yeah, right? I do need to put that in perspective. <laughs> it, it is not a matter of saying when you see somebody doing those things that automatically they're trying to get out of prayer. It's just that sometimes what we do is we seem to have this thing that uh, we build up a deficit for God that we can make up for mm -hmm. by doing other things. And the point I seek to make is when we do those wonderful things, they're, they're, they're good to do, but there is no substitute for prayer. Just isn't. So it, it depends on the heart attitude. Mm. When we're doing those things, because we're called to do those things, they register in heaven that way. Uh, but we still, even when we're doing those things, must spend time alone with God so that we have his direction. Right. And this is a topic we can all relate to. And we've all failed probably yes. at some point or another. Yes. You reference First Chronicles 1611, which says, Seek the Lord in his strength, yearn for and seek his face and to be in his presence continually. Yeah. I, there's a lot in that verse a there. A lot. Yearning for and seeking his face. Uh -huh. uh, unpack that a little bit for us. Well, I think first of all, his strength, when it talks about uh, uh, seeking his strength, his strength as opposed to our strength, because mm. there, we are so prone as human beings to move on our own strength. We concoct the plans that we want to do for God, and then we ask God to come in and bless it. Well, we haven't even gone to him to help, have him help us to formulate the plans. We do it. You know, we're, we're moving on our own strength. Mm. And then secondly, when it talks about yearn for his face, this is a face-to-face -face relationship. Can you imagine, we, we have this kind of relationship where God doesn't want a religion, he wants a relationship. Uh -huh. And so that's what the face-to-face -face is all about. And then the third one, I forgot, is, uh, let me see, it's, the, the strength and the face. Being his oh, presence, being his presence continue. Yeah. That's the atmosphere. We have to have a, a daily atmosphere that follows us along, uh, an atmosphere of holiness and righteousness so that we're speaking right to our brothers and sisters. We're treating them right and we're choosing the right words to say and we're not hurting people, yeah. all those kinds of things. Well, you, you also reference in this teaching um, back to Jesus and, and specifically the time that he heard of his cousin's death, John the Baptist. Yeah. And I've heard you say, if Jesus needed his alone time with God, how much more do we <laughs> need it that the, the, yeah. our Savior, the, lo the Lord and Savior we look up to, he needed that alone time too. Yeah, I, I mentioned several different examples of Jesus getting away from people and going off to pray. One of them being uh, when he learned of the death of mm -hmm. his cousin John the Baptist. And there are other uh, times. Uh, between healing campaigns is another one I use where he went off and prayed. Um, there are just a number of occasions that we mention in the message yeah. where he does that. And what he's doing is he's re-energizing his batteries so that he can go on to the next thing for the Lord. And again, if we don't do that, you know what we're going to be doing? We're going to be moving on our own strength. Right. It takes us right back to our own strength. Right. So we've got to do it. Well, that's a great platform to set up what you speak on next and um, your next teaching, which is something that's very heavy, the idea of rejection. Mm -hmm. and looking at it from the perspective of the rejection Jesus went through before the crucifixion. But really, we spoke a little bit prior, the rejection that maybe we've all experienced at some time, yeah. and, and that's really behind a lot of the bitterness yeah. or just a lot of the, the hurt in a lot of people's lives. Sure. There's even a bullying that's going on. That, yes. that, there's a form of rejection in that. I've done a couple of uh, TV programs for the public TV station in uh, Toledo on that subject alone. Big issue in schools and the like. Christ went through the rejection so that he would know how to relate to us mm. as we go through the rejection. And when you, when you read intricately about that rejection, he came to save the very people who rejected him. That, 
That's hurtful. Yeah. That's very hurtful. Uh, and we learn early on, don't we, as children about rejection, be hmm. rejection because sometimes our little peers will reject right. us for one reason or another. And it is very painful. But when we come to Christ, it doesn't mean that we won't have any more rejection, but we have someone who's gone through it to help us as we go through life. Because as Christians, let's be careful to understand we're going to go through rejection by a, a sin-cursed world that does not understand right. this lifestyle that we live. Right. Well, and take us through a little bit the depth of Jesus' rejection, because we certainly experience it in our own lives. But you point out a few things in your teaching. You know, the fact that Christ set aside his glory. He's the Son yeah. of God. And like you said, to save those who are actually rejecting him. But it's a, it's a very deep rejection. Can you imagine on his human side, when he left all the glory in heaven, came down in bodily form, came down as a human. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, we today, as well as those back then, rejecting him. And, reje and he's looking and thinking, I gave up all of this right. to come down here for people who are still rejecting me. But I think one of the most significant rejections, though, uh, Zach, is the rejection of his father. Hmm. Because when he, when he hang, hang there on that cross and said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God stepped back and actually left Jesus. He abandoned Jesus right. alone because when he looked at Christ, he didn't see the Son of God on that cross. He saw the sins of the alcoholic. The, he saw the sins of the drug addict and the prostitute, the homosexual, the heterosexual. He saw all of that. And when he saw that sin, because God is offended by sin, he rejected him. We want to remind you, if you enjoyed these interviews, you can watch Bill's complete teaching Thursdays at 9 a.m. and Sundays at 1.30 right here on TV44. Guys, back to you.